Hey guys, so today we're going to look at how to solve a quadratic by completing the square. So far, we've already looked at how to solve a quadratic by factoring the expression when all the terms are on the left-hand side. And we've also seen our backup method of using the quadratic formula to solve a quadratic when all the terms are on the left-hand side. And that quadratic formula is still our backup method even for completing the square. So if you're finding it too hard to factor a quadratic or you're not able to using the PSF method and you're also not able to complete the square, which we'll look at today, you still use the quadratic formula as your backup. So there are three methods to use to solve a quadratic. But if a question asks you to solve a quadratic by completing the square, then there is a certain process to follow. And I'm going to show you the way that you can do it. So what is completing the square? What does that mean? What that means is that if we have a quadratic, and I'm going to write out an example here of x squared plus 6x minus 2 equals 0, we want to get our left-hand side to look like a perfect square, which actually means we want to get a bra one bracket squared to equal the other side. But we don't, we can't straight away put this into a perfect square because this expression is not a perfect square. And if you need any revision on a perfect square, we're going to look at that in another video. So what you do, if this is not already a perfect square, which means you can factor all this side into one bracket and square it, is you do these steps. The first step is that we want to keep this x squared and 6x together as a pair. We don't want to leave them. Once we make x squared positive and we bring everything to one side, we're going to leave the x squared and the 6x together. And we're going to take the minus 2 to the other side. And we know that to get rid of minus 2, we plus 2 to both sides. So that leaves us with x squared plus 6x equals 2. And I've left a space here because we're actually going to be adding in a number that is going to allow us to make this left-hand side be a perfect square and factor into one bracket. And the number that we add in here, we're also going to add to the other side so that we haven't actually changed anything. Everything will still be the same. If we add any number to the left side, we must add it to the right side. Otherwise, the equation will not be the same. So what number do we add in? Well, that was our first step. And step number two, I'm going to do over here. Step number two is that we're going to get this middle term this x term. And we're going to look at the number that's next to the x. It could be negative, but in this case, it's positive. Just don't forget about that sign. In this case, the middle number next to the x, not the x squared, is plus 6. So I'll write plus 6. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide it by 2. I'm going to halve it. You halve that middle number. That's the next step. What's plus 6 divided by 2? Well, that equals 3, and I'm going to put a circle around that 3. So that is half of plus 6. Once I do that, my third step is to get that 3 and square it, because that is going to give me the number that goes there, and 3 squared, we know, equals 9. And I'm going to put that in a box. So whatever number is the square of half of that number is going to go here. So that's plus 9 and it will always be a plus number because it is a square number. So that's plus 9. And because I added plus 9 here, I have to add it to the other side. So that is our working out there. Now let's simplify this step. So we have x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 2 plus 9, which we know equals 11. But what I'm going to do now is I've actually made this side a perfect square because I've halved this number 
and I've squared it and added that there. So it's actually going to come out as x plus 3 squared. So I've put that circled number there and it always will be. See how 3 was half of that? That will always go in the bracket. If you then square that number, that's the number we add there to both sides. So the square number is being added and the circle number, which is half, goes into our bracket when we make a perfect square. And we know that that must equal 11. So you can see here, and I'll take out this circle, you can see here that to solve for x now, to find x, we can just do the square root of both sides. Because that gets rid of the square. And because I've square rooted root 11, I have to do plus minus. And I'll just make that a bit clearer for you guys. It equals plus minus root 11. Because a negative number squared will still equal the same positive number. So what we are left with next is we have x plus 3 equals plus minus root 11. And we can't simplify that third anymore. But if you can, you always simplify it. Then to find x, we get rid of the, the 3 by minusing 3 from both sides. So we're left with x equals minus 3 plus minus the square root of 11. And what that means is we have two answers. We have x equals minus 3 plus the square root of 11 or x equals minus 3 minus the square root of 11. So we get two answers, which is what we usually get when we have a quadratic. If you remember how we factored quadratics and when we use the quadratic formula. So it's, we still get the two solutions that we usually see. So that's how we complete the square. To go back over that, we take the number or the C term, remember that's our C, we take that to the other side and we keep the X squared and the X term together. We then halve this middle term to get three and then we square that to get 9. And that's the number we add to both sides. We then can make this into a perfect square by putting that half of that term, the 3, into the bracket, squared. And then we're going to square root both sides and get the 3 to the other side and we get our answers. And you guys can check this with the quadratic formula as well and you'll get the same answer. The last thing to remember with completing the square is that what, why we're using it is that it allows us to get one bracket into our factor instead of two brackets, which we normally see when we did the PSF method. We're making a perfect square by adding in the right number. And now you guys know how to get that number and make the perfect square. The difference is we don't need the right-hand side to be zero the whole time. Okay, so make sure you go over the perfect square formula to understand why this is working. Otherwise, you now know all three methods to solve a quadratic, factoring the quadratic formula and completing the square. And if completing the square and factoring do not work or you find it too difficult when you're doing a question, you always use the quadratic formula as your backup. The last thing with completing the square is that this x squared term must always have a number of one next to it. If it has a two, we would divide all these terms by two. We would divide off everything by two so that x squared only had a one next to it. It must be a one. If it's a two, divide every term by that number. And we'll look at that in the next video when we look at some harder factoring and quadratic questions. See you next time, guys.